Okay, hello here, it's Lazy Mick from Prince Rock Racing. I decided I'd do a quick video here, outlining the rules, or my take on the rules anyway, for our 2015 saloon stocks at United Cornish Oval Racing. Here we are, you can see we're in my uh, lavish spray booth where all the magic happens. And I've got a couple of cars behind me here, and I'll show you what I put into them. Give us a sec, I'll just swap the camera. So here we can see my new saloon for this year's 2015 season. There's the old shell. He done pretty much, I reckon, somewhere in the region about 30 odd meetings, hundreds of races. And I've only just decided to pension him off now because he was just looking a bit tired for himself. If you have a look inside, the reason he lasted so long, well, it was close to the chassis, but you can see we've just put a little bit of pillaring in there that's helped a bit through the years. We've also put a little fillet there in the arches. And we've got a few sort of little tricks there, just tiny little reinforcing jobs, just to make her last that bit longer. And to be honest, I think a well-used shell is not a bad look at it at all. But it's time for a new one. So here it is, Ford Cortina. We're going old school for 2015. I think she looks bloody handsome. She's had a bit of work on her over the past week. But here she is. Same, same chassis as last year, and the year before for that matter. And it's just a bit of GRP... Uh, glass fibre that's been cut out on the old bandsaw here in the here in the workshop and if I take the the lid off in fact just before I do that let's just turn her on her side so you can see what's happening here as well I'll just balance her on the end and you can see here that we've got some of this loosely best on a skippy chassis and it runs right to the edge so you can see where the wheels are when they're straight look you can see that it runs all the way through and it's just parallel to the edges of the wheel that means if you have any side impacts, then it's also then shared by the chassis as well and you're not having to replace your shells every meeting. So I think that's a good thing. And this particular one, I've just rolled those sills just nice so it's just a nice smooth transition all the way through. And I see no problem with that whatsoever. Let's take the top off, this might just take a second. So we've got a chassis here, and what you can see, standard four cell nickel metal high drive battery, with a brush motor. I think he's a bit of a trick motor. It might be a Saturn 20, this one, if I remember rightly. Now, I don't see any problem with people trying different motors out for your standard sort of saloon stocks meets at UCOR. Maybe for our bigger meets, we will standardize on the G2 motor, but I see nothing wrong with that at the moment at all. A Saturn 20 is fine by me. We've downgraded for this year. We used to run a Speedmaster. Bloody expensive things. Lots of the pro guys use them. I just found the reverse of it, just a little bit slow. So in a bid for speed, I've gone back to a mechanical item, little number there from Largit. She's handsome. But I've done a couple of little upgrades. I've changed the wire in, so I all wires all inside here. And we've also added this little resistor. The standard ceramic one that normally lives under there has a tendency to burn itself out and take the, uh, the servo with it too. Whereas here we've got this little heat seek number down on the chassis. We've wired it up directly, and that's just a little bit more reliable, I find. I've also added the Glitch Buster capacitor wired to the radio gear as well. Helps with the radio issues a little. And then we've got standard timing transponder for United Cornish Oval Racing. You can see here, wheel base is exactly the same as the standard Marde V12. So here you can see I've got a standard V12 chassis. We'll talk about building bangers later on. I'll not make another video for that. But here you go, you can see I can line this up and it's exactly the same all the way through. My chassis finishes there, runs up there. Okay, all the mounting points are all the same all the way through. You also notice I've got this little kind of raised bit at the back. Let's just try and put that there. So you can see that we've just put a little plate out, extended the bumper, so it just sits neatly with the shell that I've got set up there. So you can see it just kind of finishes all quite neatly at the end. At the front as well, I don't like slamming my bumpers right down on the chassis, so I've just used a little bit of off-cut there, and we just got like an old V10 mount there just to raise it up, and it just sits that little bit higher, so when the body's on, it tucks nicely under the bumper where that is. Okay, so that there is my chassis for the 2015 U-Core season. Um, you can see there's nothing else really that fancy. We've got a Z-Drive on the back. Okay, so you can see there that we're running Z-Drive nylon gears. That's all fine here at UCOR. 
And we've also got fancy nylon wishbones, which all seem so seem fine with me as well. You can use braces if you want. I can't use braces because I've got this fancy steering rig set up that smashes into them. So I've had to leave them off. And if you want to use bearing wheels as well, well, that's fine by me as well. I don't tend to recommend them because, well, it narrows your choice of wheels. And I've got set up for non-bearing wheels. And that's what I'm sticking with. I mean, I've even won a wear on three wheels. Who needs bearings? But if that's your thing, then you go for it. So any questions, then, yeah, drop us a line. But there's my chassis for this year. Hope you've enjoyed it. Many thanks.